Oh, hey guys, what's good, what's happening, and what's going on? Well, last night, I decided to go out fishing. The temperature was right, it was nice and warm out, the wind was blowing to the southwest, and let me tell you, the fish knew I didn't have a GoPro on because holy crap did I ever catch some fish. Like this one, and 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 this one. That happened. Caught a bunch of fish and had a great time and no video to, you know, showcase the event because didn't have camera on. I was like, I'm just gonna go out and catch a fish because I'm bored and only one of them was a keeper. So I managed to get some snacks out of the deal. Had a little bit of snackos, which was nice. Friggin' meatloaf is stuck to the tray. I gotta use two hands now because I need two hands to grab the meatloaf. Anyway, I managed to um, make my swim bait once again official, which is awesome because I caught a walleye with it. And then, uh, yeah, caught a walleye with the Shamu colored one, the black and white. So they were literally biting on everything. But then again, Waylon was there and I think he caught a, uh, caught a, uh, a, a walleye on a Senko. So normally walleyes won't choke back a Senko on, an, on a, a wide gapped hook because they can't fit it in their mouth. But this guy had determination to eat it, so he super did. Good for him. Yep, that's baked on there. Good. Tastes awesome. I love meatloaf. I wanted to grab my friggin' my thermos thing. So, actually, I'm actually gonna bring. No, I don't even know what the hell I'm doing with my life right now. Anyway, I'm gonna bring this thing upstairs. I gotta grab my cup to get some water because I have absolutely nothing to drink except for coffee, and there ain't no way I'm freaking drinking coffee with my dinner. And Oreo, for some reason, thinks I made this plate for him because my dog is broken like that now. Lovely. Anyway, so yeah, the walleye were on fire last night. It was a real good time. Come on, Oreo. Come on. Go downstairs. Yeah, the walleye were on fire last night. It was amazing. I used a saucy swimmer on a jig. Caught a couple walleye. That's how I caught my keeper. No, I caught the keeper on the Shamu swim bait. Had a couple that were just like, just under the wire, you know? Like we're allowed to keep from 40 to 45 centimeters for Walters. And some were just under the wire and one was way over the wire. Now, of course, you got people there that are like, I don't care if you keep it. I won't tell anybody. And it's like, I don't care about that. It's more or less. Here are the rules, follow them. These are set by the government and there's a reason for it, I'm pretty sure. But of course you got some people there who I fished with before were like, I knew you wouldn't keep it. I knew you wouldn't do it. Of course I wouldn't keep it. It's not what you do. If it doesn't fit the bill, you don't keep it. Why do you gotta break the law? You know, you get caught poaching fish and not only is it a permanent loss of license or at least a five year suspension, that's what the MNR was doing to this one group that they found down south that was uh, keeping everything, like oversized, undersized. Like if you have a status card, if you're of indigenous, then yeah, you can literally keep any fish you catch, even when fishing out of season because there is no season for you. You can do whatever the hell you want. But when you're me, friggin' white boy, I can't do that. I gotta follow the law. Because if you do get caught, like the odds of getting caught where we fish is slim to nil. There's no way the MNR is coming out to the point or even coming in on boat to the point because if they did, they would end up putting a massive hole in the hull of their boat and well, rip boat. I don't know. I like going fishing just because it's fun. It's fun, it's relaxing sometimes and it's, it's a good way to get mental clarity, you know? A lot of people don't realize that. Like it's, it's more like, it's not like meditation. It's kind of like yoga, but you get to kill things. Anyway, last night was a good night. I just got a notification on my phone that my, yeah, my Amazon package is here. I ordered something for truck camping and it doesn't feel heavy. It really doesn't feel heavy. Let's uh, set you guys up here again. Just gonna go close that big door. Keep the cold air in here. Cause she is kind of saucy and hot out. <clears throat> Thinking tonight I'm gonna go fishing again because tomorrow it's supposed to be like thunderstorms and shit weather. So I wanna get in as much as possible on the good days so I don't feel so blah on the bad days. What is this? I, I thought it would be. Oh no, it's exactly what I ordered. So I ordered this for my cot. And what it is, it's a mattress that self inflates and goes on top of it, but it straps to the cot. Cause when you're like me, you move around a lot when you sleep and that's never a good time. Guarantee that box is in the middle of the kitchen before the uh, day ends. I'll show you how this sets up probably later on. But as for now, I need to go upstairs cause I need to eat. Before I eat, I need to tell you guys a little story that happened last night. So I was using the Saucy Swimmers by Guggen. I really enjoyed them so much that I designed a lure sort of the same but a top pour, because I don't have an injector yet. I will get one someday, but just not today. Designed a friggin' top pour, kind of like the Saucy Swimmer, except for I took the head off so I can use a jig instead to uh, rip it through the water column and entice a bite. So I start off my print and everything looks great. Well, 
I thought it did because this is what happened. It built the plate and I was like, okay, good. We got the base down, it should be fine. Nope, it fell off the build platform and then it made a stringy mess. And you're probably thinking, oh yeah, Adam, that happens all, all the time. Well, because I wasn't paying attention to the printer because I went to bed, I woke up in the morning and this was stuck on the hot end and dragging around the bed. Yeah. Yeah, beauty, right? Yeah. So that's friggin' awesome. So I base, I'm out of hot ends. I don't have any more of the, uh, the tips for the, uh, the hot end. I had to order some, they're like six bucks for five. So I ordered two bags of them just so I can have them on hand. So that when I'm stupid and I do dumb things, I can recover quicker. I also ordered the, uh, uh, what the hell is it called? One second, let me just take a look at Amazon here. The Capricorn Bowden PTFE tube XS series designed for the Ender 3 V2. Literally, it's a tube that goes all the way through to the, uh, the hot end right up to the extrusion point. And it's literally has no room to allow a clog to occur. A lot of people done this upgrade and said game changer and I'm looking for a game changer. So I ordered this tube up. It comes with the cutter and all that fun stuff and the bits to attach the cabling to your, your extruder and all that. So got that coming in, got some hot ends coming in and I ordered some PETG, I think that's the name of the wire. Anyway, PEG T, I don't know. I ordered some better um, filament to make molds because apparently that PETG stuff is amazing to print with. It's easy to print with. You don't even need a heated bed to print to it. And uh, it works great for stuff that's gonna be taking in a lot of thermals which I need because Plastisol gets pretty toasty. That's fun. So my 3D printer's out of commission now until I get those parts in from 3D Printing Canada. Once they come in, I'll fix it back up, get it all ready to print, clean it all out because I know there's a backup in there. Because when it initially did the, uh, the first swipe to clean out the nozzle, it was all black. And then it came back and then it started turning clear. So I know for a fact that it was plugged and it's probably super plugged in there right now. So I'm gonna have to heat it up, clear all the shit out, and then we should be golden. But right now, I wanna eat some food. So I'll talk to you guys later. All right, guys, it's after work. It's after my workout, it's five o'clock at night. I forgot my multi-tool. I kinda need that because lately I've been setting the hook like friggin' Andrew Flair and I definitely need my pinchers to take the hook out. So mind you, if I forgot this one, I do have the better one in my car. And by car, I mean truck. Multi-tool on board. I don't need the mic. Everything else is out here. So I don't have you guys on the tripod because you're going to be going on chesty because that's the bestie because we're going fishing. But first, I want to take a rip over to Walmart, see if they have any swim baits. I checked Canadian Tire and they don't have them and I can't go to the tackle shop because they closed an hour and a bit ago. So you gotta do what you gotta do to get shit did. And sometimes that requires you to shop at Walmart, which sucks. I've been debating on switching the vlogs over to uh, using the handy cam for making the videos and just leaving this thing attached to the chest mount. Also, my buddy was saying that the GoPro Hero 10 gets better everything than the GoPro Hero 8, but I can't see how 1080p is any different from one camera to another. So maybe he's full of chode juice for all I know. Uh, I got everything in the truck except for my bucket. I need my bucket that's still in the house. And then we'll head over to Walmart, see if they have any swim baits because lately I've been having fun fishing those. Oh, I forgot my hat too. Guys, I'm so, I'm about as organized as a kid's friggin' toy box right now. I want my hat and I want my glasses. I got next to no hair up there and <coughs> I don't need to sunburn my scalp. Now I'm like, this would be so much easier when I'm going fishing just to have the camera already rigged and ready to rock and just grab and go versus disconnecting the tripod. And then, you know, I used to do that with the Hero Session 5. The problem with the Hero Session 5 is in order to use it with a microphone, you need a special adapter that they discontinued making because none of the new GoPros are compatible with it. Anyway, enough ranting, off to Walmart. See you soon.
All right, guys. Um, it's just as wavy as it was yesterday. So I figure that's a good chance to catch a fish. I'm getting soaked standing here, though. Jesus, Murphy, the bottom of my pants are already soft and wet. It's freaking brutal. Freaking brutal, bud. I got uh, bought some baits from Walmart there. I got some Lunker Hunters swim baits. They smell like nothing. I can't really see them in the water because the water's so crazy. And they don't really flap too hard, so I might be switching it up very soon to something a little bit more aggressive. That's a snag, yeah. Worst case is, is this breaks off, who cares? And this is gonna break off because I'm breaking it off because that Lunker Hunter is not the juice tonight. She's too wavy. I need something with a good paddle. I was gonna make my own baits. Oh, Jesus, good thing I wasn't standing there. I was gonna pour some baits tonight, but I really wanted to get out fishing and tomorrow they're calling for thunder bangers, so tomorrow will be a better night for pouring some baits. But don't worry guys, I won't put you through the boringness of watching me do that. Instead, I'll just listen to music and pour some baits because I have a color scheme I want to try. So I bought some new jig heads. They're lighter weight, they're only an eighth of an ounce instead of those heavy three eighths ounce. They don't really need anything that crazy to do what I'm doing. I just wish they would, when they dip them, they clear the paint out of the eye hole. Now there's a tool you can buy to do that, but I obviously don't have it. So you just use the next best thing. Use your Berkley's multi-tool here. Find the pocket knife attachment, which comes to a nice point. Jam it in the eye hole. She's open. Beauty. Sometimes got to do a little bit of horseplay to get shit to work right. So I bought a couple of baits. I bought the uh, Lunker Hunters. And I bought some other ones. I'm hoping the other ones are paddle tails. Because I now that I got the camera on, chances are I'm not going to catch shit now. Another thing that played a role yesterday was nobody was swimming in the lake. Which was weird because yesterday was just as hot as today. Worst case scenario, I'll just go over the other side over there when the kids get back. Because they just took off to go and I don't know what the heck they're doing. Probably going for supper. I think they literally got out of school and just came right here. It's like last night was just the juice. It was so much fire. And then tonight it was, well, I snagged, so. I bought these, and I bought these Berkeley Power Baits. That actually looks something like a shiner. They're four inches. They stink. Maybe the stink will be good. We'll find out. Whatever. It's on there. It's on the, the bait holder. One eighth ounce jig. We're gonna have to recalibrate here real quick. How the hell did that happen? Oh, I'm probably okay. No kids out there, they're all over there. I, bought, I brought some floral carbon too to use for a leader in case the walleyes tackle shy tonight. I'll throw on a liter of fluoro and then they shouldn't be able to see it, but like, what does this guy do in the water even? Too friggin', I can't tell. Too wavy, I need like a pool of calm water just to send it out, find out. It's also pretty early, so who knows what the heck's gonna happen with the bite. Mind you, yesterday I was here in the second cast, I caught the first fish, and then I caught one the next cast after. And I caught him right in front of this rock right here. This rock right here there, caught him right there. I cast it out and the friggin' lure came right by the rock and Walter just grabbed it. So let's try that again, even though we're gonna get soaked up here, because this wind is not calming down. But that's okay, I own a dryer. I'm not showing off or anything, I'm just letting you know I own a dryer. Well, now it looks like I peed myself. I also got some of last year's juice in the bag. I went and raided my other fishing bag and stole all the power bait out of it, the, the uh, flukes and the other things. So worst case scenario, if we want to try with some salted baits, we have some. I should have brought, I bought some of that Berkeley Gulp. That stuff was fire when walleye season was in, in play. And I got a soaker. Ah, glorious bird's nest. Guaranteed I just lost my bait. Dude, I did just lose my bait. I had a fish. Oh no. Never mind. I'm an idiot. 
Totally thought I had something. I probably caught that rock. Let's just turn up that brake a little bit. Problem is, is the current's so heavy that it doesn't take long and like that kid is swimming right where I'm fishing. I'm hoping it's like last night where the wind calmed down and we were able to uh, get a little bit more control over the bait. The retrieve rate on this reel is ridiculous. It's like 7.1 to 1. Probably won't be the juice till later on tonight, guys. So uh, thinking about saving some SD card space and editing time. Bring it on when I get a fish on the hook. I'll just make sure I set it really good so he can't freaking spit it and then I'll hit the record button. It's kind of funny, where I'm standing is perfectly dry. Everything else is wet. Nope, there was a fish there. There was a fish there. Okay. All right. Let's go. These glasses are useless. I can't see through the water when it's like this. I'm like stuck in that crevice right down there. I can see the jig head bouncing. Oh, that's what it's going to be tonight. Literally snag after snag after snag after snag. And then I broke off. Whatever. See, it's because I got the GoPro on that I can't catch any fish tonight. If it wasn't for the GoPro, I'd probably be doing just slaying them. But I go to make a video and I can't catch shit. So we got Logan here who's trying to catch the bass that I dropped in the friggin' live well. But the bass, they like to hide underneath that big rock over there. And he's trying his best to get them out. Meanwhile, Bass Bud's living his best life in this murky cigarette butt soaked water. Just, just living it. Does not want to come out from underneath the rock. I tried to get him out with my, uh, my bait, but he wasn't having it. He wasn't falling for it. Probably because I have the GoPro on and he doesn't want to be on YouTube. I don't know. Like literally with these polarized glasses, I can't see anything through the murk. I did just see a bubble of water over here. Yeah, they're, uh, they're pretty nerdy. Well, I'm gonna go back to fishing because that's what I came down here for. And if Logan catches Thumper back there, uh, we'll try and remember to get a video. I think I may have lost my bait. I just literally had to hit the moment it hit the water. Nope. Literally had to hit the moment it hit the water. Let's put it back over there. We're using the power bait this time. Uh, the little three and a half inch flukes. I brought the five inch flukes, but I think I only have like four left. So yeah, uh, Waylon was telling me the other night he was out here fishing and there was a guy that was fishing out here with him. Just somebody random, eh? And Buddy caught two slot size walleyes, put them in a bucket and then he caught two more and he put them in the, that creek that Logan's trying, trying to fish that bass out of so you can come back and take them home without getting busted for taking four of the walleye out of here. The moment Buddy left, Whalen went in there and grabbed the friggin' walleyes and sent them home because uh, screw that noise, man. All the friggin' rules, it's not hard. Oh, I know there's something out there because I had a couple bites already. I know the difference on this rod between dragging rocks and bites now. Oh, I regret not having the freaking GoPro last night. I was like, oh, I'll just take pictures of any fish, but I won't catch any. And then I ended up catching a lot of them, and one of them, which is the bass that Logan's still working on there, that guy, uh, I didn't get a picture of him because as I was going for my phone, he flippy flapped and launched out of my hands and went into the old Sarnet Creek, the live well, if you will. If we could find a way to block off that rock so they couldn't go hide under there, we could use that for a live well. Yeah, I want to make some really bright and shiny silver paddle tails to fish with for days when it's sunny. Like right now, that those that sun is like behind a layer of clouds, so the water's kind of murky. I should be throwing something that makes some noise. I know I put a saucy swimmer on and it's game over. I'll catch a fish. But those things just work. And it's because of the noise they make underwater. Like these things here don't have a paddle. They just got these V's on the back. Like, look at this stupid thing. Like, they have their application. I've had made them work with this exact setup. 
but those V's don't really flap that well in the water. Well, they flap all right, but not as much as a paddle tail, but a paddle tail just disrupts the water column and fish will feel that in their lateral lines and come and check the shit out. Keep forgetting that I want to load this reel up with, with oil. Guarantee you, turn off the GoPro, I'll get a bite. It's like the fish know that I got a camera on and they just don't want to deal with me. Guarantee it. Nope. Alright guys, we got one here. Just a stupid bass. Just a stupid bass that I gill hooked. Calm down, stupid. Stop it. Stop it. He horked it back to his asshole. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to because I feel bad for doing this. Ah, some people put oil and scent on their baits. I just make fish get bloody and use that. I use the blood of my meals for my scents. Dude, use the bloody meal, Dick. I don't know where you're going with that. You're just gonna take my spot because I caught a fish there? Woo! Fishy! So guys, you remember when I said that the MNRF would never show up on the uh, the body of water? Well, I definitely know well they totally now. showed up on the body of water. Guess I was wrong. Holy shit, guys. That was crazy. Let me get this camera off my chest. You know what? I'll talk about it when we get home. But that was brutal. I also really want to get home because I got to piss so bad I can taste it. Pitter patter. All right, guys, we're home. It's so funny though. Oh, it's raining out, by the way, in case you're wondering. You're probably not wondering, but yeah, it started raining, that's why I bounced, but I also bounced because it's nine freaking 30. And I have a fish that I completely murdered to death that now I gotta figure out what the hell I'm gonna do with. Pressure washer's not hooked up, so there goes descaling it. I guess I could use a steak knife, I don't know. But him's dead. Um, yeah, you know, like, let's move it around in there. What is that? Friggin' toads, man. Yes, Oreo. I murdered another fish. All right, guys, I have to get you off the friggin' chest mount. That was stupid. Driving me crazy. But, um, yeah, like, I warned, like, remember I said on the video, yeah, there, I think it was on today's video, where I'm like, no, I wasn't gonna keep them because he wasn't a slot size. He was like 39 and a bit. And the slot side is 40 centimeters to 45 centimeters. And the other person that was there was like, see, I told you you wouldn't keep it. And it's like, yeah, of course I'm not gonna keep it. It's not legal. Like you never know when the MNR is just gonna randomly pop up. This guy's got like no blood left in him whatsoever. He's not a big fish. He's like, he's just a tiny little guy. Like, I feel so bad that I killed him, but it's like I did. Way she goes, man. He horked her back way too far. And like, I felt like he was, he was nibbling it. And what really happened was he horked it back. And then I felt his, like in the back of their throat, they got this like compression area that they use to, they hork back the fish. And that's what compresses and, and, and chews because they have no real teeth, right? They have like these Velcro things on, the, on their face, but anyway, whatever. Try and get a couple fillets out of this. I was gonna do the pressure cooker method, but pressure cooker? No, the um, the pressure cleaner method to descale it, but I don't have it out. It's still in the bottom of the shed and I haven't cleaned that shed out, which might happen tomorrow. The MNRF guy's like, oh, that's a good eater size. I'm like, really? For who? <laughs> oh, how big do you normally keep? Well, between a pound and two pounds. Like little dinks like this, I'll throw back, let them grow up to be a more substantial meal. Why'd you keep it? Because I put a hook through his belly and then ripped it out through his face. It wasn't the best thing ever. I gotta make sure I don't show this here on video, guys, because uh, YouTube doesn't really like it when you clean fish on YouTube. You get those PETA guys involved and like all hell breaks loose. It's just so annoying. But yeah, man, you never know when the MNR is gonna show up. And if I'm there, chances are they're gonna show up. I swear, they're following my freaking cell phone or something. I don't know. Because wherever I go, they're right there. Like in the winter, the kids are like, we went ice fishing out at the, 
at Aiden's Ice Ice Shack. Aiden literally says, he goes, oh, the M&R never come out this way. The M&R never come out this way. And sure enough, that day the M&R was out there. If you don't believe me, you can go watch that ice fishing video. It's the one getting lost on the ice. And that's the first time the M&R has ever been out to Aiden's Ice Shack. And he was like, what the hell, man? Why is it whenever you're around, they show up? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I think it's time I change my phone. They probably have a tracking device on my skull or something. So if you're about to do illegal fishing shit, do yourself a solid. Don't invite me. Because apparently I am MNRF bait. Right now I got the cat and the dog swarming me, hoping that I drop this fish. Because remember, one year I went ice fishing. All I caught was a perch. Brought it home, threw it in the sink. I was going to let it thaw for a minute while I had a shower to warm back up. I went upstairs, started getting some messages on Facebook, so I was answering those, when all of a sudden, come downstairs with a towel in hand, and there's this perch, shredded all over the kitchen floor. Orion's campers totally had a meal. But no, I laughed because last night, the uh, person that was there was like, I knew he wouldn't keep it, and I just shrugged it off because I don't know when the M&R is gonna come around. They just seem to randomly show up wherever the hell I am. And I don't know if they gave the kids fines or not, the moment I was cleared, I'm like, well, I wanted to get out of there at 9 o'clock because I knew I had to fish the process. Oh, yeah. There's no way in hell. If I would have thrown that fish back, he would have been belly up in no time. I literally ripped the hole. I gave him, like, I gave him a human-made ulcer. It's a fact. I can tell you one thing. These kids are going to take me more serious now because uh, when Waylon caught that, that fish, he's like, hey, Adam, do you want an eater uh, walleye? I said, What's its slot? And he said, 15 inches. I said, throw him back. And he's like, why? He goes, it's 15 to 17. I'm like, no, dude, it's 40 to 45 centimeters. And he said to me, he's like, we don't do centimeters around here. And it's like, in Canada, yeah, we kind of do. Metrics are a thing. That's why the fish are measured in metric. And I'm just like, send him back, bud. We, uh... He's not legal. If he's 15 on the dot, he's not 45. Or he's not 40 centimeters long, so... It's gotta be 15 and a quarter inches long. Or 15 and three quarters inches long, sorry. To um, qualify to 16 and three quarter inches. The slot size got smaller this year, but it got more acceptable because these ones are easier to catch. And literally, this is all the meat I got off that guy, so that's pretty pathetic. Now, obviously, if I would have gutted them, Jesus Murphy, I swear I got this thing set to 5,000 degrees. Yeah, if I would have gutted them and descaled them, I would have got a lot more meat. But no, guys, seriously, the fishing regs are there for a reason. Follow them or pay the price. I have no idea what fine the kids got. I saw the M&R guy, he was writing on a pad, grabbing their information, grabbing their digis, got their phone numbers, got their address. I have no idea what went down, what transpired. They carded all of us, wanted our proof of legality for fishing purposes. So we had to provide that. It took me a bit to find it on my phone because last time I had to whip it out was in the winter. And let's just say I used my COVID passport more than my fishing ID this winter. Yep, that's a pathetic amount of meat, that's for sure. But it's also 10 o'clock at night, so it's good enough good stuff. I'll put a little bit of food in my belly till tomorrow. Because tomorrow is another day. But yeah, I went to Walmart and they didn't really have much choice for swim baits. So I showed you in the bucket. They had like Berkeley and then they had some Berkeley and nothing that I wanted. I wanted paddle tails and they didn't have paddle tails. So I'm going to have to go above and beyond the call of duty and pour some paddle tails tomorrow. So I have some decent baits to use the next time I go out. Because let me tell you, those Berkeleys that I was using are garbage. And what the real sauce is is what I didn't have. And that was the um, the paddle tails. I had some more saucy swimmers from Guggen Baits. I had like four left. And I started using that and it was okay. Getting some bites, but I couldn't set the hook to save my soul. Oh well, it is what it is. Anyway guys, so that was uh, quite the interesting night with the MNRF showing up. I wasn't expecting that. Buddy, I didn't have my camera on. Kind of wish I did. And he saw the GoPro and he's like, hey, is that thing recording? And I'm like, I look at him like, there's no flashing red light, you're clear. And he's like, good, because if you were, I'd ask you to turn it off. And I'm like, oh yeah? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, I don't think I need to comply for that, but don't worry, it's not recording. Because like, we're in a public place. You can film whoever the hell you want. There's nothing they can do. 
but I'd respect it and turn it off because I'm not looking to cause any problems or I blur out their faces. Never had to do that with the winter MNRF because they're pretty much dressed up like freaking snowsuit Power Rangers anyway with their ski doo helmets and their pretty much full covered armor. So, but these guys here were just, you know, their faces were exposed. Yeah, man, fun times, fun times. Let me just say, those kids are probably uh, gonna get themselves some metric measuring tapes in the very near future because tonight they were scared shitless and now they know that fall and that their digis are taken down so if they get nailed for another offense game over game over so and the mnrf told them flat out because um one of the kids asked so if you catch an out of slot fish but you kill it what do you do <clears throat> the mnrf officer said throw them back in the lake something else will eat it and last night when we were fishing I laughed because I didn't even notice it. Uh, Waylon sat there and he looked down into the water and he's like, that's a freaking walleye tail. This walleye tail was bobbing in the water like this. And he goes, it must be a dead walleye. So he casts over with his spoon and he snags it. No, it was literally the back end of a walleye. Something destroyed the whole front end. So circle of life, something will eat something. So if you kill a fish, it's not of slot size. You can't keep it, throw it back. Something's gonna eat it. A bird's gonna swerp on it or a pike's gonna swerp on it, something's gonna swerp on it. But we're not allowed to, even though we killed it, because whatever reason, doesn't matter. Follow the slot size, bottom line. You never know where the MNRF be lurking. Last thing you want is a fine. Last thing you want us to do is lose your fishing license. So, way she go, yo. Anyway, as far as that mattress goes for the cot, I plan on using it next week, and I'm actually gonna set up the cot in this room I would do it in the back of the truck, but I gotta do something with the back of the truck. Like I got a lot of shit there. Um, there's bar oil from the chainsaw that leaked out. There's um, not from my Ryobi, from the uh, the other one there, the uh, BM Mark whatever. Um, I gotta I gotta swerp up. I, I gotta I gotta clean it up. I gotta throw some kitty litter on it or something because I gotta get it out of there. And then I was thought about doing a backyard camp just for fun. God, I hope that cricket is not physically in the house. Oh wait, is that a cricket or is that my TV? Okay, no, it's not the TV. Anyway guys, I'm gonna shut her down here because I'm pretty freaking tired. And um, 6 a.m. comes early. So anyway guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click that like button. But like I said, this I'm gonna give that mattress thing a try later on in the week and we'll see how we do. Uh, 3D printer's out of commish until I get the new parts in. And then we'll get that thing back up and running and printing because I really do want to print off my swim bait mold with the paddle tail so that we can get some more aggressive swim baits out there because Walmart and Canadian Tire right now have nothing. So if you can't find it, build it yourself. Thanks for watching. Like, favorite, comment. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, guys, live it to win it. And peace the mother friggin' out. Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.